So obviously we had that uh, lovely park up uh, last night with that beautiful sunset. Um, so we're heading back to uh, Loch Lomond this time. Um, we were within the, the Trochards on the Three Forest Drive the first night. Now we're heading back down that way. Um, we're stopping at Loch Lomond. We've got the permit. Um, so we're, I've got the address in the sat nav for that, or the, the grid references, so hopefully that'll take us right to it. Um, while we've been driving down from our last... Well, I've been driving down from our last park up. Alison's obviously got Bracken in the front with her, um, and she's having a bit stroke of him and failing and stuff like that. And she has actually found um, two, ticks. two ticks on the dog. Um, he, he doesn't seem fierced at all. She's managed to get them off, um, getting her nails embedded right in, and obviously. Well. Yeah, pulled, it, pulled his fur out, getting it out as well, but uh, she's managed to get that. Um, so we'll, once we get parked up, we'll try and give him another proper check over. We do actually have a tick remover. Yeah, we've got a proper tick remover in the drawer, um, so we'll give him a, a proper check over. It is a little bit difficult, obviously, with the fur that he's got. We'll check the other ones over as well. Um, anyway, on a lighter note, just to try and cheer things up a little bit, the weather that we've had lately has been absolutely fantastic. Although we have just passed <laughs> a big um, sign on the thing with a yellow uh, weather warning. Um, I think we've got rain, heavy rain forecast for the day. Is that what the yellow means? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Well, we've just been to the shop and stacked up on goodies. Yeah, Alison's just been to the shop. She's stacked up on all the good stuff. Um, Don't tell me diabetes, nurse. Yeah. The so we'll said nothing. Good. Yeah, we did actually buy some uh, some more food because, unknown to us, our fridge has gone off, um, and we had chicken in the fridge. I think it was just a switch that was knocked off by. Um, well. I, I don't know, but we had chicken in the fridge and we had uh, pork in the fridge. Um, yeah, so we've had to just bin them anyway. Um, so we've just had to buy a couple of little provisions for tonight and tomorrow morning. So we'll see where that gets us. Anyway, I'm not even going to bother turning you around because we're right up behind a, a, a motorhome. <laughs> yeah, a motorhome that's doing literally 30 mile an hour. <laughs> so, yeah. Unless you just want to watch the back of this motorhome. But, uh, yeah, so we will catch up with you a little bit later. Hi, so we've made it to our uh, next parking spot. Uh, we bought a parking permit um, and it's a place called Inverruglas, I think I'm pronouncing that right, on the side of uh, Loch Lomond. Um, so I'm currently just outside of the visitor centre at the moment. Um, there's really nice views from here. I'll, I'll just head a little bit further down and spin you around and then take a look at these views. Uh, and then I'll show you where the parking point is. It's not the best parking point. Um, it's not too bad for us because we're in the small camp and we've got back doors that we can open. So we are looking onto something quite pretty. Um, but if you were in a normal motorhome with just your side door, then it's literally a car park is what you're in. So probably not the best views. But uh, anyway, let's just... I'm just going to head down this little gantry runway a little bit, down to the dock. So where I'm standing now is literally about 50 yards away from where we're parked. Parked up for the night. Um, as I say, it is just a car park with designated bays. 
we've turned up the designated bay that we'd actually pre-booked, someone was parked in it, um, although we did get here a little bit early, um, so someone was already parked in it. There's four dedicated bays for motorhomes um, where we are, but the ticket machine's not working, I don't think anything's going to be policed, so I've got a sneaky feeling come later on it'll just be full of motorhomes, which again isn't a problem for us. Um, but if you're on solitude, you'll not get it in this particular area. Um, so I don't know if you can quite make it out there. That's actually the visitor centre up there. And across the road there, that's actually... Uh... Oh, bear with us one second. So just across the road there, that's actually a power station. And now if you can see the big pipes coming down. Now because that's a power station and pipes coming down, I believe that works from hydropower. So potentially water coming down off the top runs down there at force and then runs through uh, like the wheels and stuff to create hydropower. I think that's what that's about. I've seen it on the telly about something else, but I might be talking a load of rubbish, but I'm sure that's it. Um, what we have noticed all the way around these locks is this yellow stuff. Now somebody said that it was pollen. This potentially does look a bit more like pollen around this area of some kind of blossom or something, but the other lakes where we, uh, the other locks where we've been looking it looks more like, I know it isn't, but it looks more like yellow powder, powder paint that uh, kids would have. It's like just tons of it and it's just washing into the shore. And would have been bright yellow, uh, especially in the sunshine. I don't know whether it's a form of algae, but it's bright yellow, which is strange. Algae is normally sort of a red, green, or I don't know, I'm not sure. But anyway, stunning views. Um, Stunning views across them hills. Um, so we'll head back up to where I've got the van parked and I'll show you around up there. So this is the visitor centre. Um, it's quite nice, it's a bit of a um, coffee shop with uh, there's some tables inside so you can't sit and eat. Bit of a coffee shop, cakes, coffees, um, toilets. So I think they close at about half past five on a night. Um, but nice clean toilets. There's no fresh drinking water available. It's any viewpoint. So right, we'll head back across to El Cares. So we are expecting heavy rain this afternoon. Obviously we've had glorious weather last few days we've been up but obviously the there's yellow weather one and has gone out now for um, torrential rain and thunderstorms so I'm just going to spin you around here so this is the the park up now in this particular car park at the moment the machine's not working um, so it's out of order so there's a few cars there ones in the distance there for that visitor centre, if you wanted to go in there. Um, there's a couple of really nice little nature trails through the woodland. And as you can see, the way, obviously we've got, there's four camper vans there at the minute. And there's only hours, it's actually near enough in the right spot. This here is one spot, so one camper van in that ga in that whole area there, where there's potentially room for three cars. This old V-Dub has just turned up recently, I think. Ford's turned up recently. This guy, I think, is just here for a few hours, I think he said. Um, and then obviously then there's ours. That's another motorhome stop, just where the little bollard is. Um, 
Anyway, I'll, I'll spin you around, let you have a look around the back. So this is the actual view that we have out of our back doors where we're currently parked. And it is straight down just onto the shore side down there. I can just start to see drips of rain appearing in the lock now. But the forest walk is absolutely stunning. Really nice place just to pot it through with the dogs. There is road noise at the moment off the air. 85 I think it is. Obviously that'll die down a little bit but to be honest that doesn't bother us. Anyway let's get back inside. So this is from inside the van at the camp up. There's our bracken. Daisy is uh, Lily. I'll get this right. Lucky is behind bracken and Daisy and Lily is with Andrew and we've got some goodies for later because we expect to be um, hold up in the van because of the bad weather and that is our view of the lake and the woods and it's a nice woodland walk there with loads of bluebells so we're set aren't we Andrew for yeah. this bad weather coming so we're hunkering down So we're cooking tonight, nice and simple meal tonight. We're having some venison burgers. So burger each and a lovely burger bun with some cheese and some sliced tomato. So nice and simple. So I think I might actually 
there's probably going to be enough fat in the burgers to coat it. So I'm just going to put that on a really slow flame. And we're just going to drop them burgers in and let them cook nice and slow. They are small, but the perfect. Perfect for this little pan. As I say, I'm not putting any fat in there, I'm, any oil or anything. I'm hoping just after a couple of minutes there'll be enough fat out the burgers to cook it in. Get that old favourite of mine, the utterly butterly. That's what we're having on our buns. Now people disagree and say we should use real butter, but to be honest I actually prefer the utterly butterly. A nice small burger bun each. Hopefully these are sliced nice. Yes they are. That one is. Look how easy that is to spread. Be perfect. Oh Bracken, I'm gonna be trying it on again. Off. Get down, little tinker. Well, to be fair, there's uh, very little oil coming out of these. Um, very little fat. So I think just to help it along its way, I will just give it a little squirt of the old light fry stuff. Uh, Shotgun. Yeah. That seems to be cooking really nice. Mm -hmm. Do you want salad on yours? Uh, just tomatoes and cheese. Please. Tomatoes. Right, that's what I was doing. Um, so I'm just going to try and finally slice a few of the plum tomatoes. So we normally buy these plum tomatoes because they're nice in the burgers and lovely just to eat like that. It's like eating grapes. So, burgers is cooked nice. We've got double cheese. Right, no, I'll throw a double cheese burgers like it's not two burgers, it's extra cheese. And we've got the tomatoes cut. We've just closed the windows on the rear doors because the heavens are just starting to open. We've been expecting rain all day, but this is literally it. It's been thunder and lightning over the last couple of minutes. This guy across the way putting a rear canopy over his tailgate. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, get these burgers sorted. And plated on that. Nice and easy. These burgers are lovely, they're not greasy at all. Which is what I was dubious of. I'm just going to put a few tomatoes just on the top. And then that on the top. a couple of minutes just to let cheese on the top melt. So tonight's meal is venison burger with double cheese and tomato. I know the size of the plate's a bit overkill but a burger looks really nice. Well I'll tuck it in nice and cosy. Thank you. Nice and cosy. You can hear that rain coming in now can't you? Eat off me, 
any of that. Let's give this burger a try. Certainly looks nice. Mm. Beautiful. See you in a bit. So both of us are absolutely knackered again today. Um I went out on that paddle board yesterday, thoroughly enjoyed it. But I've suffered the day for it. Do you reckon Alison? Yeah. Suffered with me paddle boarding. And it's it's that time again when uh, medication comes a calling. So it's a bit don't when uh I'm put them in the bowl. <laughs> Just to keep them all in one place. I'm looking forward to taking a couple of these that's gonna hopefully help with the pain I'm currently in. I've got a lot of pain across my shoulders and down my back. Um, Probably from oh, paddle boarding and just walking the dogs. Uh, right, I think that's all of mine on there. So, not too bad. Get them down. I'll, uh, Sorted. It's the second meal of the evening. Alison's got hers to take, and then uh, it's her rattling. It wasn't our tablets, it was just Alison rattling. <laughs> um, another thing, we're uh, going to jump back into bed, I think, and get uh, set up for the night. Yeah. Um, just a quick one this park up that we're actually in. Although we pre-booked our permit for this area. Um, the permit only allows four motorhomes in this particular car park. Um, when we turned up today, we struggled to actually get parked because it's a, a normal park, car park during the day. So we did actually struggle, but we did find a spot. We're not actually in a designated permit spot, but we couldn't go anywhere else. Um, and obviously we've had all this rain and stuff and in the meantime cars and vans has been moving backwards and forwards and the place has rammed <laughs> so well, we've yeah. got the best view yeah i mean we have got a nice view at the back and uh, we did get parked up quite nice um but obviously for for the forestry commission or whoever it is who looks after the place and they the introduce these permits for them saying that there should only be four motorhomes in this parking area there's about 25 at the minute probably <laughs> um they're literally just parked all the way around uh, right next to each other it isn't an issue we're, we're nobody's making any noise or any, anything daft like that it doesn't spoil our view our views out the back door um but yeah just something to keep in mind so if you're passing drop in because you know you'll find somewhere um and if you're looking for somewhere in the future then don't know, potentially don't just be put off if you haven't got a permit because that looks like there is still parking available. So anyway, I think our Daisy is shattered. Our Luppy's shattered. Bracken's shattered. I'm shattered. And I've done my back in. Alison's done her back in. So we'll see you in the morning. Oh, good morning. Perfect sleep last night. Um, wasn't as many camper vans. Um, I briefly took the dogs out for a quick wander so they do the business. 
and I think there's only about five or six camper vans left and the little uh, there was a Citroen Berlingo uh, camper across the just in front of us he's now moved on to the other side of the grass bridge so I don't know if somebody's moved them on there's a big motorhome there now so I don't know if he's been moved on but I'll show you around in a little bit um, obviously in the meantime what I do have is breakfast has been done in the form of bacon sandwiches and a lovely cup of coffee so I'll crack on through these I'll give you a quick whiz round outside and show you what's what okay see you in a bit so good morning again bacon sandwiches is gone they were nice uh, obviously we had torrential rain last night um, it came and went, which wasn't too bad. So looking at where we're at at the moment, so this was the park up. Um, permit parking was for four campers. Obviously there's been about three or four pulled out this morning. So these are the ones that's left. It's not an issue. There's plenty of room for everybody on there. Um, so yeah, it was quite nice, quite nice uh, pop up. It's nice and peaceful. The good thing about this pop up was, obviously, because of all the rain, we're on hard standing as well. So it was nice getting in and out of the van with clean feet. So that was quite good. I think coaches have had a sleepover. They're just coming back. Morning. Stunning view down of the lock again this morning. So calm. Absolutely stunning. So, yep. Yeah. Just to round that off, another great park up. Thoroughly enjoyed it. We did get the permit, it was only £4.20, but obviously it looks like you don't really need it. But either way, £4.20 is well worth it. Um, so, yeah, see you in a bit. We're just going to get uh, packed up, cleared away, get everything packed away a little bit and tidy to get the dog sorted, and then we'll be on the road heading home. See you in a bit. So, all packed up, all nice and tidy in the back of the van. Dogs all fed, watered, walked. Yeah, um, they've done the business. Big boss. Um, yeah, mm, just squeeze past this one. Pretty easy for us to get round. It's better than the road <coughs> in the Lake District. Yeah, I mean, it's better than your drive on. Yeah, so obviously, we're now heading back home. Obviously, if we feel like stopping off and if there's anything on the way of then we'll do that. Um, I think potentially we may be looking for a bit of a toilet stop. So might do that. Um, the actual toilets on site where we've just been parked, <laughs> ironically, the closed for maintenance today. <laughs> Would have been better if they'd closed them about 8 o'clock in the morning for maintenance. Then uh, would have give every would have give everybody a chance. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're just heading back now. Um, we'll just see where the road takes us on the way home. Um, How do you think the week's been? Well, the four days. <clears throat> I think it's been absolutely brilliant. We scored really lucky with the weather. Yeah. Um, our park ups that we've had have been fantastic. What was the first one? Yeah, I must say that that first one on the Three Lock Forest Drive yeah. was, excuse me, an outstanding park up, really nice, but it would have been a nightmare last night with all the, the rain. It would have been a right mud fest getting in and out of the van. Yeah. Um, it was solid enough to get the van in and out. It, you know, you wouldn't have been bogged down or anything, but just the location of it, you were in the forest and stuff. Whereas last night we were on hard standing and gravel, which was nice when you were getting in and out of the van, your feet were clean and stuff. So I that, that was a big help. That first one though, because the, you opened the back doors and it was just birds surrounding you. Yeah, that, and it, looked it was tremendous. We met, um, we met a great guy, 
Colin. Yeah. Um, the Scotsman who was playing the banjo in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Whether or not he was playing it really well or not, I don't know, but he yeah, plays he it a million times better than I do, so that guy. was good. He <laughs> was really good. Yeah, we had a good laugh, a bit laugh with him. And, then, uh, uh, what was, was the next part of it? Um, <laughs> Mine's got... Oh, we, we went through the mountains. Yeah, yeah so I can't remember the, yes. the road or the pass, but it was on the way up to Glencoe. Yeah. Um, there was the, the pass that sort of takes you through all the, the high mountains and stuff. Past the rivers and the falls. Yeah, so we yeah. had a great park up there as well next to that uh, little stream, the Babylon Brook thing. Oh, and lovely. Mind you, when we would, we came back out of the pass, so we didn't actually drive the full length of the pass, we actually came back out the way we went in because we were heading up towards Glencoe and Auburn and stuff. Um, and as we were coming back, there was some uh, some young'uns, like <laughs> in the sort of late teens, you know, early twenties. They were parked up and camping, and they they had found like a bit of a waterfall with a big rock pool and stuff. And oh, they kept oh, one hundred percent. If I'd stopped the van, if I could have stopped the van at that point, yeah. I would have been in with them young'uns because they were like just jumping off the rocks. They were in the the camp prepared. They had a big. Uh, in a tube, tire, uh, you know, the tire in the tubes and stuff, you and they to were. Live your childhood. Uh, well, definitely. Uh, I, I mean, I'm. Yesterday, I was in quite a bit of pain yeah. from the paddle boarding again. Yeah. Simply because it, it's muscles that haven't been getting used, and that was the whole point of us getting the paddle board in the first place, was to actually, you know, I know it's supposed to be really good for helping build up your strength in your shoulders, your core. Um, your thighs and stuff like that, and I could, I, could, I could really feel that, so it 100% works. And obviously, I need to stick with it. So, what was that? That was on the beach, yeah. Um, oh, lovely beach, yeah. I mean, it was a public beach. We got there, and obviously, because the weather was fantastic, it was the sun was belting down, there was tons of families down there, they were having barbecues on the beach. Uh, yeah, there was loads of other campers. We sport a few couples on there. Um, it was at the camper van and stuff. Um, there was, so sad, yeah, some young ones were camping out further along the way on the beach. And like I said, the sunset was just incredible that night. Uh, to the point, night, to the point it? where we stayed up really late, half past tenish, <laughs> um, watching the sun go right down. And ten o'clock, there was still four or five kids playing in the sea at ten o'clock in the night. It was um, just nice to watch, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just incredible. And last night? Last night, so we parked last up in... Park up, yeah. yeah, last park up. Can't remember what it's called. I know I mentioned it earlier, so I'll, I'll flash the title up again on the screen when I remember. Um, it's on the edge <coughs> of the lock. Yeah, right on the side of Loch Lomond. Um, I went down the, to the little beach bit on there. I went plodging in the lock and it was because it was so hot yesterday as well. Yeah, even though it was looking like really thundery and stuff, it was really warm and humid. It didn't actually start at about quarter six yeah. on the night. So, and to be fair, wasn't that bad? Yeah, I mean, we were probably protected from the weather a little bit yeah. uh, with the trees and stuff like that, obviously being, in, the being in the forest. Yeah, but it was it was really comfortable, nice yeah. and cosy. Um, yeah, and like I said, we went to bed, it must have been about 8 o'clock or so last night, and all of us flat out. I will see it through what we realised this morning. Um, from our last trip, if you did watch our last trip, you saw a couple of mornings where like, I got up and I was like, oh, I really thought about going home. Then Andrew had a bad night and we talked about going home, but we carried on. We've never thought that on this four day trip. And we clicked on the reason why is because we brought our pillars from bed. And it made a hell of a difference to the night's sleep and the night's rest that you get, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, so we had just been using, obviously you've got quite a few cushions in the back of the van. We were just using the cushions, just mainly to save on space. Yeah. Uh, but this time we thought, no, we're going to take our pillows. Um, and it's such a difference, yeah. A real big difference, having that bit more comfort. Um, 
I know there's quite a few of you take like all your bedding and stuff like that, which can be a bit of a nightmare for us because obviously we've got the dogs and the dogs is clambering about on you and things like that. So we do actually use sleeping bags, but just them on the yeah, what I actually do is when the bed's made, I lay a, a sleeping bag flat and then use another sleeping bag open just like a, a quilt. So I don't actually zip it up, I have it all open and just use it like a quilt. And that's really warm and it means I can move about easier. If I get cramp, I can get out easier. Um, so yeah, it's and then obviously when we get home, it's a lot easier washing the, the sleeping bags than it is trying to wash a big quilt and stuff like that. So and yeah. That, and lying down last night for me actually fixed me back a bit. Yeah, because you were I'm getting... I trapped a nerve yesterday in my back. Yeah. And I just needed to lie flat and I'm getting up this morning. Touch wood. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's alright. Oh, sorry, Bracken. I couldn't reach you, Dad. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean the dogs has really enjoyed this week as well. Yeah. It's uh, they've loved it. They've been in the locks. And <coughs> yeah, see. I mean Bracken, we nearly taught him how to swim. <laughs> now must he's just like you. Yeah, <laughs> must have the only dog in the world that cannot swim. But never mind. Well, <laughs> I think what I'll do is I might swap this this harness for a buoyancy aid oh. until we get the hang of it, yeah. and then <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll say we'll get on with that one. But anyway, that's it for now. We'll just uh, we'll show you the bits of roads, and if we stop off anywhere else, we'll catch up with you then. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's it for us for now. See you soon. So we've actually stopped off. Um, we were looking for some amenities, um, and we came. Uh, we saw a sign for Loch Lomond Aquarium. Uh, me and Nelson, you know, we enjoy aquariums and aquarium fish and stuff. So that caught our interest and obviously we've managed to use the local facilities. So we're at a place called Lot Roman Shores. Um, not really 100% sure everything that's here. There's a couple of, there's direct, Sports Direct, there's a Fraser's. Um, there is other amenities, there's a map across there. Alison, what was across there? Um, it says Free Zone Area Adventure Course. There's a bird appraisal centre over there. That one says Woodland Walk Picnic Area, Red Squirrel Trail. And there's a thing pointing to shops down here and the aquarium down here. So the aquarium and obviously the lock is down here. And I can oh, it see, looks like you can go see, on yeah, well. see the old paddle steamer. I think I yeah. think we read about that somewhere along there. Um, Oh, is this where the old puddle stick is? <laughs> yeah, it must be. Anyway, we'll have a bit wander further round and uh, we'll see what's what. I mean, obviously, if you've been up this way before, you probably already know what this is, what we it's all about. stumbled on it. Yeah, there's the aquarium, Sea Life Centre, at the end there. Oh, there, made of the lock and steam beach house. Yeah, all right, so here we go. Look, we've got all these. Yeah, so we've got quite a bit of a shopping mall there. So oh yeah, there's the Sea Life Centre. Yeah, the Sea Life Centre on there. It's nice. Oh. We thought we were going in. Yeah, so... Yeah, I think we'll uh, try and have a quick pop in that aquarium. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then we'll head across to our aquarium. Yeah, I think you go outside. Oh, he's there. Yeah. He's gorgeous, isn't he? He's in the blue of the colour. And there we've got There's two of them. Oh, he's in the water. Oh, hey. Are they back out? <laughs> Uh, come on, uh, can I take them? Can you not? Though, I can't, can't have bend down enough to get. Right. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, there we are. There he is, gone fast now. That's a nice. Uh... Yeah, that's good for them, right?
Today's are obviously more from our shores on it. Yeah, might be. <laughs> they look amazing with the amount that food. Now, there is a type of trigger by the looks of it. Oh, I'm not sure what type of trigger because there's quite a few wins, so they're quite pleasant ones. I've never tried the big one yeah. the shape of the trigger. Yeah, that's the sharks on the bottom. So this is the deep lock tank. All right, so we've got some of that deep. I don't know. So this turtle has obviously lost, uh, lost one of these flippers at some point. He's in here for rehabilitation. My little rears. These are all obviously from the tropical seas. There's a big leopard mole right at the back there. There's, I can't remember what this shark is, with a pointy nose on the front. Yeah. Yeah. Stunning. They, these are the fish that weigh like absolutely stunning. These are the rays coming back round. Absolutely stunning. This turtle has obviously been attacked somewhere or is we'll try and find out a little bit of information about this turtle. So he's obviously lost one limb. Little stumpy. Hey, you little stumpy. Oh he's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. Sure. You're gorgeous. Yeah. Oh you can just say he wants a little bit of gentle interaction. Absolutely stunning. I must admit, if you've got a reef tank at home, you don't want any of these little pesty enemies in, because these are horrendous. <laughs> yeah, they are so, a pest and enemy. Yeah. So fine in this tank, but if you've got a reef tank at home, these and enemies in here are a pest. Oh, there's a little little file fish. Little That's file, nice. Little file fish. Little leather jacket as well. The yellow tongues is stunning. Are you going to tell them about your fish tongue? <laughs> that you'd give up? Uh, I, I briefly mentioned it. Me and Alison used to have a, a huge thousand litre marine aquarium that was a full reef. I'll try and put a little clip and I'll show you my aquarium. We did actually give it up because of obviously my health condition made it a little bit more difficult. So I did give it up, but it was our pride and joy. It was also our money pit, but it was also a money maker. Yes, <laughs> so I will put a, a, a clip in if I can find it. I'm sure I'll put some stuff, some videos lying about. But yeah, volatile lionfish, absolutely stunning. Yeah. These have the toxic fins on the top. The dorsals, well, I think it's just on the dorsals on the top, but absolutely stunning. Um, 
very predatory. They will eat anything they can get in the mouth, apart from a cleaner. Oh, and there is, there's always a cleaner rus in an aquarium where they keep these. As a potato cord. Wow. Yeah. These. Oh, there's a shark. Yeah. Hammerhead. Yeah, there's a little hammerhead. So these potato cods, these actually can grow about the size of your sofa. I've actually been scuba diving with these and fed them with hard boiled eggs. I absolutely love hard boiled eggs. So You told me that and I never believed it yeah. would be the size of a yeah. sofa, but they actually are. Look at the size yeah. of that reel. So there is coming across. There's some black tip sharks swimming around at the yeah. back. There's obviously a tunnel that runs through the back of there as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that will make them. There's a little tip reef shark. And they say what fish he is. He's a. Uh... So a little tunnel to walk through. There's the rays on the Incredible. Wow. Leopard rear. Small hammerhead shark. It's <laughs> cleaner us. Black tip reef shark. Oh, look behind you. Behind you. Behind you. Oh. And there we have a beautiful angel fish. I can't remember off the top of my head what type of angel fish it is. Is he an emperor? Or it's an emperor. No, it's not an emperor. Embry angel fish are the business. So let me know here. Yeah. Yeah. There's the leopard rays. Thorn back rear as well next to him. Oh my yes. god, look at how the breeze Right, let's just stand still a second. So yeah. there's the black tip reef shark going over. There's a hammerhead. Yeah. There's a black damsel. Is yeah. it with a small Yeah, domino damsel. Domino damsel. Oh, is the rear going to move? No, he's comfortable he's just comfortable. lying there, I think. My shanks. Absolutely stunning. Definitely worth coming and eating, isn't it? If there was one job I'd really like, it would be the glass cleaner in that aquarium. So we'll just have Mix a look in the gift shop. Yeah. <laughs> Mix them with the locals. Right, we'll go to the coffee shop. Uh, no, we'll just grab a coffee and we'll head back to the car for the dogs. So, anyway, that was... Uh, so we've just been in the uh, Loch Lomond Sea Life Centre, it was really nice, I enjoyed it, it's pretty much the same as a lot of the other Sea Life Centres, but they are nice to go in if you're into that sort of stuff. Uh, adults, I did try and get us in for two, chil uh, two children, but she wasn't having any of it. She didn't even ask us to double check me edge or anything, didn't want any ID, she just said I was old, so we had to pay a full price. Um, full price in there is £16 each for adults. Um, it's worth it. Yeah, if you if you're in uh, the aquariums and the fish and stuff like that, it, it is worth it. it. You know they are nice, and they do have the re uh, rehabilitation bit in there as well. So yeah, it does does help. Right, so we're gonna try and grab a takeaway coffee and head straight back around to the van and then make a move. I think. Wanted to get a coffee. Uh, we're just saying about Alison's just mentioned about that aquarium. It had a sign up outside saying that. Um, you have to pre-book and it had a QR code to scan and book and everything. And I started to do that and then the young girl came out and said, oh, you don't need to do it, you can pay inside. We're happy to have anybody. <laughs> Which was really weird what she actually said and it's just actually dawned on us that how many people would be put off having to pre-book using the QR code and then put all your details yeah, in the phone stuff like We didn't actually do that. We just walked in and paid. At the till? Was, yeah, at the till. Why the hell have got them signs there? I haven't any clue because the, there wasn't any discount or anything pre booked in no. or anything. They might as well just chuck them signs in Let's the bin. Let's just get loads of coaches. I do want to say though, this place, if you were staying nearby, you could spend every day coming here and doing something different. Like I said, there's plenty of play parks. There's a big shopping centre, the walks, there's a golf thing, there's the bird of prayer, there's the aquarium. I'm going to just get that right, the golf thing's like a little crazy golf, it's yeah. not a golf course. For kids, I said. Yeah. Um, but it would be expensive. But yeah. there is lots to do. And 
you can hire pedalos and canoes or go out on the boat trips. Yeah. This was an unexpected surprise. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. So the aquarium was amazing, especially the turtle. Not as good as our aquarium. I will put them in. <laughs> and we're going home this time. Unless we say something else. <laughs> so anyway, we're off. Bye for now. So this is us just about home now. Um, we've got about five minutes left just along this road. Um, we've had a fantastic time while we've been away. I hope you've enjoyed the videos. Um, they're probably going to be, obviously go out in a two, three, whatever. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. And if you have all the good stuff, like, comment, subscribe, we love getting your comments. We do try and reply to everyone that we do get. Um, so yeah, stick with us for our next adventure and uh, we'll take you along with us. So till then, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. See you in the next one. Bye.